Hello, my name is Antoine Dunn, and today I will present my uh, article, my paper on uh, non-personal data in the electricity sector, a key asset for private companies and public authorities. So let's see why. So data is key in the energy transition, and uh, that energy transi transition is often referred to by the term uh, treaties, and it stands for uh, decarbonization, decentralization, and uh, digitalization. <coughs> And uh, digitalization enable both the, the decarbonization and the decentralization. So it is also a key element of uh, that energy transition. And uh, in turn, the data, they are also one of the key elements of the, of the digitalization uh, process. So <clears throat> we will uh, we'll see why the, the data are key in the electricity sector, but will focus only on the non-personal data. So non-personal data in the electricity se sector could be, for example, the, the price of the power or the capacity uh, on the grid. And we'll see that uh, those data, they are, of, they are of interest for both uh, private actors and uh, public actors. So it raises the question of uh, governance of such a, such a data. And uh, I think it is even more important in the current context where there is a a bit uh, legal framework that, that is a bit uh, a puzzle, still in construction with many uh, many pieces of uh, legislation that to fit uh, that fits well ideally uh, all together. So <clears throat> I will uh, start with the first part on uh, why uh, data is a key asset for COVID, for for companies. So why is so? So data is a is a legal requirement for companies to, to operate in the energy sector. So it is not only a, a business or a technical necessity, but it is also a, a legal necessity to have access to, to data to, to perform uh, your activities. And we'll see that for that reason, uh, it become uh, more important to regulate business to business or B2B uh, data sharing with a new set of rules. But I start first with, uh, with the fact that uh, data is no legal obligation for all companies to, to, operate, to operate in the electricity sector. And uh, I will use the example of the NEMO. And the NEMO, it is the nomi nominated electricity market operators. So it is uh, basically a platform that organizes the power trading. And NEMOs, they are regulated by the CICM regulation. And uh, the CACM regulation, basically, it is the, like the set of rules that uh, organize the, the power trading between the different countries in the, in, in the EU. So as part of this uh, legal framework, uh, NIMOs, they are obliged to disclose uh, data and to have data both prior to start uh, their operation and then uh, during, the oper during the operational phase. And I would give, for example, two, uh, two examples of that. So the first one, it is uh, the obligation for, for the NEMO to, to disclose the source code of the, of the algorithm that they use to perform uh, their market coupling activities. So it is a quite uh, far reaching uh, legal requirement. And another uh, obligation that they have under the CICM regulation it is to publish their data. So for example, the, the price, the volume that they have produced as part of their activity, they have the obligation to publish it on their website. So it is uh, available for uh, any stakeholder. So we just saw that uh, the data was a, like, not only a business or technical necessity or requirement, but also a, a legal obligation to have those data to, to perform your activity as a company. So that's why it uh, justify uh, maybe new rules on the uh, business to business uh, data sharing. I, was, I want also to say that such uh, business to business uh, data sharing will be obligations that are not new. For example, you may find some uh, in the CACM regulation that we just discussed or in the electricity uh, directive. But, and also, like a, those uh, two examples was uh, focused only on the 
on the electricity sector, but even more broadly, there was also the, the database, the directive that uh, have some kind of uh, of uh, obligation to share the data. For example, uh, if you benefited from the sui generis uh, database uh, protection, you had the obligation to uh, to to allow a non substantial reuse of your uh, database. So it could be analyzed uh, in a sort of uh, legal obligation also to share at least uh, some of your data with uh, third parties. But what is new uh, today, it is the willingness to expand those uh, obligations to, to share the, the data. And uh, it is the main proposal of the of the data act so that the data act it is still a proposal it is only a proposal it is not uh, yet adopted but uh, yeah, the, the main objective will, will be to foster the, the exchange and the circulation of the of the data uh, between the, the businesses between the companies <coughs> and while the data act the, the uh, data act focused uh, maybe on direct exchange of uh, data between the uh, two parties. Uh, there is also regulation of indirect exchange of data via data intermediaries. And uh, that is the object of the Data Governance Act, so the DGA. And this piece of uh, new uh, leg legislation has been uh, adopted uh, in, uh, really recently in uh, 2022. So it is, uh, already in force, even though the obligation uh, will be implemented uh, concretely only uh, next year in 2023. So we saw that uh, data is key for, for private sector, for companies, but data is also uh, key for uh, public authorities. And here I will discuss two roles of uh, such a uh, such a public authority. The first one is their role as a state, as a regulator. So what do I mean by that? I mean that under that rule, the public authorities, they will use uh, the data to, to, to supervise, to monitor the market. So they will use the data internally. But there is also, there are also a second rule uh, that I call the state as a platform. And under that rule, their main objective is not to use the data internally for their own purposes, but it is uh, more to, to organize the sharing of the data with uh, any third party. So in a way to foster the, the data economy. So I will start with the first, uh, first role of the state uh, as a regulator. So under that, that uh, first role, the uh, the public authorities, they will uh, get access to some data from some company to perform their, uh, their monitoring uh, role of the market. So, for example, one, one, one kind of, uh, of, uh, of such obligation is the CICM regulation under which uh, the NEMO, they will have to disclose uh, quite a lot of data to the regulator, uh, as we've seen uh, in the first part. And another uh, legal obligation uh, specific to the, to the energy sector, it is the remit uh, regulation. So what is rem the, the remit regulation? It is a regulation that uh, obliges the, some market participants to disclose or to transfer the data, their data to, to regulator so that the regulator they can monitor the, the trading activity of the market participant. So that was the, the first... Uh, maybe the more classical role of uh, of the of the public sector bodies under the state as a regulator uh, uh, activities but what is new uh, under the under the data act proposal it is that the the legislation will introduce uh, an obligation for companies to disclose some of their data in case of uh, unforeseen event so, for example, uh, could have, it is not specific to the energy, energy sector, but that kind of uh, new legal obligation could have been used for the, for example, in the context of uh, the COVID crisis. So that, 
tattoo has the yeah the quite classical role as a, with the authorities as a state as a regulator and now I would like to discuss the, what is also interesting their new role as a state as a platform so here maybe a first uh, first step in that uh, regard it is the like the objective of uh, transparency so the the public bodies they will seek to organize the, the disclosure of data for the purpose of uh, transparency to the benefit of the market but under that uh, trans or for that transparency purpose the, the the third party they don't get the right to use the, the data to which uh, they, have, they have access it is only they can only uh, have access to it for a transparency purpose. Maybe a step beyond, it will be the, the open data that, uh, that we discussed uh, last. So under that first uh, step, the transparency purpose, I have I identified uh, two types of rules that may be specific to the energy sector that I will discuss. So the first one, it is under the ENSOI transparency platform uh, regulation. So again, uh, what is uh, that regulation? It is a regulation that organized the publication by uh, some market participants, for example, the, the NIMO, but also the transmission system operator, TSO. So they have the obligation to, to publish their data on the platform, on a digi digital platform that is managed by, uh, by ENSOI. And so under, under that platform, the third party, they can access uh, the data for the purpose of uh, transparency. So they can see the data, but normally, like they are not able to reuse the data for any purpose, like a commercial purpose, unless there is an exception uh, stated for that. And the second, the second example that I would like to discuss, it is a climate change disclosure. So it is a bit, it is a bit more recent. It is more targeted on uh, listed companies, and uh, it requires uh, those companies to disclose the carbon, the carbon emission. And uh, here the objective, it is to, uh, to make sure that investors, they will invest in, uh, in companies with the least uh, carbon emission. So that was the, the, first, uh, yeah, the first level, the first step uh, of this disclosure of data to the benefit of uh, of third party or to the benefit uh, of the market. But a step beyond is to go uh, to open data. And uh, under open data, the, the objective is not only to, to have uh, transparency for the market, but here, the, all the data you could access, you, could, you, will, you will have the possibility to reuse it normally for any purpose, including uh, commercial purpose. So under the the open data uh, obligation, most of the data that are held by uh, public bodies, they are subject to, to that uh, open data obligation, open data principle, unless the data are protected by uh, confidentiality or trade secret, or the data are protected by uh, intellectual property right. There is also other uh, the protection by uh, by uh, data protection for personal data but me in my paper in that presentation i discuss uh, only non-personal data so i will uh, not discuss further the, the like the protection uh, that are available for uh, for personal data and for those uh, new uh, for those data that are protected by again uh, confidential confidentiality slash uh, trade secret or by uh, intellectual property right. The the data uh, governance act uh, expand the reuse of such data that previous previously was uh, not uh, subject to any reuse uh, obligation. So they do so by uh, proposing purpose based uh, purpose based reuse. So it is not full open data, but it is only a reuse of the data subject to a specific purpose. So it is a bit, a bit different for, uh, than from a full open data, but 
in the same time, it was the, the way uh, found to to permit the reuse of such data that previously were, were not uh, reused. And so with that, I would like just to, to jump to, to the conclusion and to make a bit uh, a quick, uh, quick recap. So we saw that data that are of interest for both uh, private companies and uh, public authorities. And we saw also that uh, the legal framework applicable to, to such non-personal data, it is still a bit uh, a puzzle in construction. So there is many uh, piece of uh, leg legislation, but uh, no way, maybe we need to make them uh, fit uh, all of them uh, together. And so with that, I have uh, finished uh, finish my presentation. Thank you all, and I welcome uh, no, any question. Many thanks. Thank you, Antoine, for the presentation. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Valérie Ralf. I'm a research associate um, at the Florence School of Regulation Energy in the electricity sector. And I was invited um, to review your paper and to discuss it. So I read it with great interest. And uh, I have three slides. Um, one is basically, uh, I would say, my understanding of, of what you were presenting in your paper. So it's a synthesis. Then I have some general comments. And the last slide is about further comments that I was hoping could also serve as an input for the discussion that um, I think we should have. So in terms of the synthesis of the paper, let me just move this. OK. Can you in put it in presentation mode? It will be a little bit bigger. Yeah, I actually prefer to have it like this if it's OK. Um, but I can make this maybe here a bit bigger. OK. So um, the paper that Antoine um, presented, uh, according to my understanding, it, it aims to outline how the European data strategy is implemented in cross-sectoral legislative texts. For example, as you also mentioned, the Data Act and the Data Governance Act. Um, I think uh, the assumption is that the sharing of non-personal data, uh, because this is the focus of the paper, as foreseen in these cross-sectoral legislative texts, has an impact of different sectors, uh, sorry, of different actors in the electricity sector. And he discusses two of these actors, one are companies and the other ones are public authorities. On companies, it has specifically an impact when they share data with public authorities and we when they take up um, this new role of uh, data intermediation and they provide data intermediation services. When it comes to public authorities, the impact is um, on the one hand, when they monitor regulated entities in their role as state of as, uh, state as regulator, or uh, when they make the data available for reuse by stakeholders as state as a platform. The hypothesis, uh, was a bit hard to detect. So I make an educated guess here. I, I would say it's that the governance as foreseen in these legislative proposals uh, needs to be reviewed in the light of the issues that are discussed in the paper. And uh, in terms of the flow of the arguments and the structures, um, I, I understood it uh, as follows. So the data is increasingly a legal requirement for companies as you also presented. Um, first of all, for obtaining the right to operate, and then second, also um, during the operations. Then the data users, uh, they need to access and use the data from other businesses. And uh, this is um, why rules on data intimation service, services are justified. But uh, as is also discussed in the paper, there are some issues with the harmonization of the legal requirements that remain. Um, the data used by the data needed by public authorities um, is needed, first of all, for internal monitoring purposes, and second, for external, um, I think, market facilitation services. There are issues with different legal regimes for the same data accessed by public authorities for different usages. This is also what um, you mentioned at the very end of your presentation, Antoine, I think. And then it is unclear whether certain activities by public authorities actually also qualify as data intermediation services. The conclusion is a bit the same as the hypothesis. So um, I didn't really find it in the paper, so I'm making an intelligent guess here. Uh, I think um, the paper intends to show or to conclude that the data as a requirement to comply with legal obligations justifies new rules. First of all, on business-to-business -business data sharing and that the need 
um, by public authorities for internal and external tasks justifies the regulation of um, business to government data sharing. So this would be my synthesis of the paper. And um, I think I can move to the general comments. Um, I think in terms of the scope, uh, the paper would benefit from a bit of a redefinition because now um, the, the, the scope as I see it is really the implementation of the European data strategy. But actually the data strategy refers to more initiatives than are discussed in the paper because I think what is mostly discussed in the paper is the data act and the data governance act. But there are also initiatives when it comes to data spaces or high value data sets or cloud services in this strategy and it is not made obvious you know, the choice that is being made there as to which of these initiatives are being discussed and, and which are not. And second comment that I have regarding the scope is that um, there are also quite a couple of um, examples in the paper that are beyond the data strategy. So as you mentioned, Antoine, the NEMO requirements from the CACAM regulation, also REMIT and also transparency platform, for example, these, at least to my knowledge, are not part of the data strategy. Um, in terms of the structure, I think the paper is sort of a review style, uh, maybe a bit higher level, but here I, yeah, I forgot to make a disclaimer that I don't have a legal background. So um, <laughs> this is at least my understanding of it. Um, for me, uh, it's, you know, it, it had the impression of being a mix of reporting and sort of teasering of issues sometimes without too detailed of a discussion. And that in parts convey the feeling of incomplete analysis, but I think there are some light improve, you know, some light things that can be changed that would really improve the paper a lot. And this is, for example, um, when working on the paper structures, so really one paragraph that outlines the structure of the paper and also numbering of the sections um, would actually help. And then I think the coherence can also be improved, for example, by, by including one concluding paragraph per section, which is sometimes done, but could probably be um, enhanced. And then there are a couple of parts that, um, in my view, could be added to the paper to enhance it. It's a review of the status quo, and it refers a bit to what I was saying before. So what is included in the European data strategy? What is already out there in terms of academic literature? Um, or also, you mentioned at some point in the paper, existing or upcoming legislation, but there is no review of these and also sort of a positioning of the paper as to where exactly you intend to contribute. And I think this is also related to the scope. Uh, in terms of the aim of the paper, I was not so sure whether it's to justify the new rules on business to business uh, data sharing and business to governance data sharing, or whether it's actually to discuss the issues with these new rules or whether it's a combination of the two. Um, I think in terms of the methodology, as I already hinted to, I think there are some, you know, some improvements that can be made um, when it comes to the practical steps that are made to respond to the research question. And also maybe at some point you could state more clearly which examples you're going to use and why exactly those, why NEMOs, uh, because how do they relate to the data strategy, which I thought was the sort of the, um, the main focus of the paper. Conclusions, I think, are already mentioned that um, could probably be added in also the future work section. Um, and then I think just two of the higher level comments that I have is uh, key elements of the initiatives um, that are compared to the paper would actually be useful for the reader. So you refer a lot to the Open Data Directive and the Data Governance um, Act proposal, but their, their content is, let's say, not really um, summarized, I would say. And also I think some more details on the background of the research and on the future steps as already said, would be very useful to contextualize the work. So these are general comments and I hope that they um, are sort of useful for you um, when you go forward and work more on the paper. And then I have some further comments um, that I found interesting. So uh, one thing that I picked up was this, that you also mentioned in your presentation was this comparison of NEMO designation criteria and also renewables permitting procedures. To me, the, the choice of these examples was not super clear, I have to say, because I understand from your presentation that, um, that the point is sort of that the, the NEMOs have to share a lot of data when they want to start operating their business. Um, okay. And then the point with the REST permitting procedures is that 
sort of these can be um, simplified or reduced in terms of the time period that is needed. But I did not fully understand, you know, what um, sort of how they are related and also how they are related to the European data strategy. Um, you also mentioned in your presentation, I think I noted it down that, no, I cannot find it. Oh yeah, that um, NEMOs are required to share um, the algorithm um, data related to the algorithm. So I think it, it is what you refer to as the source code in your paper. Um, and that this is an unprecedented obligation. So I was just um, interested in hearing um, which other financial regulations are less stringent because this is the point you make. Um, and the same refers to these this digital regulations that are less stringent when it comes to the prohibition of the cross usage of data. Um, then I just have a clarification question because um, um, at the end of the paper, I was not fully clear on whether this limitation on the purpose-based reuse is actually not so stringent or more stringent um, for public bodies than for businesses. And I was hoping that you could clarify this. Um, what else do I have? Um, I think it would be very interesting, and you also mentioned this in your presentation, uh, in your presentation before, um, that there is this finding that the same data accessed by the same entity can be subject to different legal regimes. And what I was interesting, interested in is, is, is a discussion sort of, of the consequences on this. Do you think that this is a problem? Um, or do you think this is, you know, it's not a problem? Um, so this is something that I was wondering. And then the last point that I have is about this major shift that you also mentioned. And I understand that somebody is in the room that has done some work on this. So um, apologies for having missed this discussion. But I was wondering when I read the paper, if this is not sort of a different regime that applies to different type of actors and documents and rights. So isn't this more of a complementarity between the Open Data Directive and the um, Data Governance Act proposal? or maybe I just completely misunderstood it. 